Hey everybody, welcome to the Red Men TV. Steve here, yes, with your latest daily news update. I hope you're all doing well. Like I say, get involved in the chat throughout the show. Give me your thoughts and comments on any and that we speak about. We're going to be doing transfers, of course, because the window is open. But we're going to start with a bit of share number chat as well. Because yes, it's been announced today. We've been talking uh, for a couple of weeks now. And we, Liverpool have lost some big numbers in terms of share numbers. Seven, eight nine and ten all available or all, all were available um lewis diaz has taken one of them yeah so uh number seven will be lewis diaz's shirt that's announced on the official Liverpool website lewis diaz will take the number seven jersey ahead of the 23 24 season he'll switch from number 23 um He's got, they're going to refund anyone who bought some Diaz 23 stuff as well which is nice to hear but yeah one of the big numbers then it has taken now he follows in the list of Liverpool Premier League legends to wear number seven of the Premier League era. You've got legends like Robbie Keane, Nigel Clough, Vladimir Smyser, Steve McManaman, Harry Kuehl, okay, James Milner, and of course, Luis Suarez as well. So yeah, Luis Diaz becomes the eighth Liverpool Premier League number seven, if that makes sense to you. Um, the real Carl Jones said it's, it's, it's strange how they've announced Diaz as a seven, but then Darwin nine has been leaked. Well, as it, it's, there's rumours about Darwin taking the number nine. I wouldn't be shocked if Darwin does take the number nine. But yeah, as it stands, the only one that we definitely, definitely know about is seven. Um, Dave asks, let's see, do you reckon Gapo or Nunes will take nine next season? I'd rather them watch them duke it out for another season to claim who to see who can claim the first striker spot. Um, I, I think my guess is Diaz will probably, sorry, um, Nunes will probably get the number nine shirt. Um, the 27, 2 and 7, that kind of stuff. I don't know, maybe it's that. But my guess is, I think he will. I thought Trent might have took number 8 at one point as well, but apparently that isn't going to be the um, the case. Obviously, there's a couple of signings as well. Um, Alex, because Alexis McAllister, we know, took that. Uh, Ali Mack 10, didn't he? So 10's gone, 7's gone, but we've still got 8 and 9 up for available. Yeah, Andy Cap says, yeah, 8 is still free. It's weird because I never used to think number 8 was like a, a legendary number at Liverpool until Steven Gerrard took it. So, of the Premier League era... Heskey, Cater, Leonard, and Stuart Collymore. It was Gerard who effectively made Liverpool number eight, an iconic shirt in the Premier League era. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. But like Louis, Louis Diaz obviously fancied that seven. I was wondering, like, if, would it be a midfielder who's going to take it? Would it be a new sign and who got it? But no, instead, it was a. It's very much Louis Diaz number seven shirt. We'll find out who takes the other ones. Right then, moving on to a bit of transfer news. We're going to start with a, a very quick piece actually before we start talking about incomings, potential outgoing. So Reese J- sorry Reese James, he plays for Chelsea. Reese Williams has been linked with a summer loan to Aberdeen. Now, we sp- I spoke about this on Jero Insight with Neil Jones that we put out on Redmen Plus earlier on today. Now, the it feels like Reese Williams could do with a loan. Um, and obviously, Liverpool had really good success with Leighton Clarkson going up to Aberdeen as well. So maybe there's a club there who we know treat our play as well and stuff like that. So I think, again, we'll see where Liverpool are at. There's talk that they're going to sign a centre-back uh, this summer. I can't imagine a world uh, where they don't. Well, no, sorry. I can't imagine a world where Reese Williams is going to get too much game time. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good move for all concerned. But, yeah, hopefully he goes up to Aberdeen as well. And we'll see what happens. He's still, you know, he's still very, very young, Reese Williams. We all remember him, of course, from... Um, Obviously, the pandemic season, when he was thrust into action, and him and Nat Phillips helped Liverpool get over the line in terms of the Premier League. Um, in terms of the Premier League t- top four, he's actually ended up finishing third, didn't he? But since then, limp time's limited. Had a couple of bad loans, haven't really worked out for him. So, hopefully, Reese Williams goes up to Aberdeen if need that is confirmed and does well. And then we'll see where we're at with him, it, it, with his future. Whether he's one who goes out on loan. A la Harvey Elliott and comes back and gets himself in the team or just gets himself a move a la Leighton Clark. You know, obviously made the permanent switch to Aberdeen. Then um, we'll have time will tell. But yeah, good luck to Reese Williams if indeed he does get himself up to Aberdeen. Right then, we all want to talk about the incomings, don't we? Before we get to the Romeo Lavia stuff, just want to bring up a uh, a piece from Get French Football News. They are reporting that Liverpool have strong interest in Rennes Jeremy Doc, you remember he was linked a long time ago, wasn't he? According to Mohamed Tabashi, too, let's go with that one. Liverpool have a strong interest in Stad Rene, Ren, winger Jeremy Doku, 21 years old. The Belgium has a contract that runs until 2025. He arrived at Andal- he arrived from Anderlecht for 25 million euros in 2020. He's been good at the French club, and obviously it's just Liverpool are interested in taking him. Um, 
He says, Liverpool, the French journalist describes Liverpool's interest as very strong and it is likely to result in a transfer, although no agreement has yet been reached. Interesting one. It's a new name, if nothing else. Now, all the transfers links recently, we've been talking about midfielders, haven't we, for a long time. It's all been midfield, 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 midfield. And rightly so, midfield, 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 because we need midfielders. But this is a little bit of a different one. Now, the thing, I think we, it was, it's was been a long time. Jeremy Donk, Jeremy Doc, who seems to be on the radar for a, a while. Maybe they're interested, in I couldn't tell you, but it's stupid over. I was just going to bring up his, um, his average positions for those who aren't too, maybe not be too aware on transfer marks, or say average positions where he's been playing um, last, well, pretty much all his career, really, whether it's at Anderlecht or, in, or over in France. I'll bring that one up now. And yeah, look, he's, he's effectively, he's a, well, he is, he's a forward player. He can play attack in midfield, but I don't think Liverpool are looking at that. You know, he's left, he's predominantly a right winger. He can play left, can do a bit of centre forward play as well. But look at that. The vast majority of his um, of his games have been on that right hand side. 67 appearances, there's 10 goals and 10 assists as a right winger. Got a bit from the left once or twice in other positions. Um now whether there's a um whether there's a, a something along the lines of Liverpool feel like they need a, a backup for Mohamed Salah, potentially, I don't, I don't know, like if if truth be told, but the the I don't see it. Personally, looking at this story for me, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm always willing to be proved wrong and I'm often wrong more than I am right, uh, which is fair to say. But like, I don't really, for me, I can't see it. I can't see Doku. I can't see Liverpool being in for... I, I just don't think they're going to buy forward, if to be told. Now, he's, he's, he's had his injury issues as well. He's had, he's, he's had plenty of injuries, hamstrings and stuff like that. He's missed a fair bit of games. But more so... The only way I suppose it could make sense if Liverpool decided that um, they want to be Harvey Elliott full time midfielder and don't worry about him, you know, deputising from from Mohamed Salah on the right. But yeah, I mean, he's been a, his name's been around for ages. It's Doku, yeah, like Luke says, yeah, every summer, and it does feel like that. Dan tweeted today, didn't he? Um, it's a groundhog day when we get linked with these type of stories. It's just, it's just, um, what's the word? It's just. Yeah, maybe it's new. I don't know. Is it news? Is it not? I don't know. I, again, let me know your thoughts, guys. Would you think we're going to sign a forward this year? Um, or do you think it is just going to be midfielders and maybe a defender? We've In the meantime, we've had a super chat from It's Crossbow. Regular support to the show. Thanks very much, mate, for getting involved once again. I hope Klopp gives Bicetic a place in the team this season. Um, I'm pretty sure Stefan Bicetic will be about. What happened last time? Liverpool have to be careful that they overplayed him and he got injured. He is very, very young still. He's, he's very, very raw. He's extremely talented. And I've got no doubt that he'll be in the squad and he'll be in around the first team. But he can't be playing every single game, every single week, because that's just what happened. And it resulted in a stress injury. And now he's, he was out for the end of the season. He got himself into um he got himself into into the team, stayed in the team. But then unfortunately the injury happened. So for me, I, I don't even think it's a question, mate. I think he will be around absolutely convinced about it. He'll be in and around the squad. And he deserves to be. He was excellent. I wouldn't even be um shocked if he starts, you know, if, if, if he starts not the season because with the injury, but like by the, by the end of the season, Jürgen's got him in his best eleven. I would I think the talent is is very much there. The manager's willing to give young players. He's willing to play young players. We're, going, we're obviously being liquid Lavi. We're going to speak about in a minute another young player. But you are right to, to reference as we speak about Lavia. What? How does that impact Stefan Bacetic and stuff like that? For me, it's um, it's a case of if you get if you're going to have young players, you've got to have a fair few of them because you can't, you know, the, the demands of playing Premier League football, European football, week in, week out, young players, they can pick up injuries, they can have these stress injuries. Curtis Jones went through something similar. Uh, you know, when your body's still developing and you're still growing, these things can happen. That's what Curtis Jones had. Steven Gerrard had it all those years ago, of course. He had back issues. And again, it was apparently caused a little bit by grow, you know, growing pains, effectively. Um, obviously, not more technical than that. But you are right. Pachetic is, I think he's an absolute superstar. And if Liverpool were signing him, from a, from another team, having shown 10, 15 games of what he showed for Liverpool, I think we'd all be very, very excited about it. So I'm with you, I'm, but I'm pretty sure he will be in the team. Um, I'd be shocked if he wasn't, really. In terms of like what you guys are thinking, in terms of wingers, are we looking um, what are we looking at? Are we looking at players? Then he said, we've had a comment from Nathan, if we buy a winger, they need to be left-footed to cover for Salah effectively. Otherwise, we might as well just play Diaz on the right if Salah gets injured. It is, it is a, it's a fair point because our... Because uh, we played the inverted wingers, getting someone left. That's, that's the issue. I think we have sometimes when Harvey Elliott plays on the right, he can cut inside, but he, off, he often wants to go around the outside as well. So it makes it does make sense. You want someone if, if you if you're 
listen, I'm going to be careful. You can't replace Mohamed Salah like because it's just impossible. He's Mohamed Salah. But if you're having someone who plays there, when, even when Salah isn't playing, and I wonder if Liverpool maybe, you know, Salah won't like this, but look after him a bit more. You know, you say to Mo Salah, don't worry about playing the early Europa League games. We'll, we'll try and limit your minutes. Now, he won't want that. He's an absolute freak. He's an absolute machine. Touch wood. Touch as much as I can. Salah, in, Salah doesn't get injured often as well, so that, that is a good thing. So, in terms of backing him up, maybe it doesn't have to be someone who plays a lot. But I do I do think Liverpool are going to have to um, get themselves someone who can play. Like, and I know Andy says Elliot's left-footed. Yeah, what I meant, sorry, Andy, is that you want someone who can cut inside that pace on, on that left foot and go for it. Harvey Elliott's very much is left-footed, but he doesn't really strike me as that. He, he, he doesn't have the pace of a Salah. Um, and that's what I'm saying, like... When when Elliot plays there, he kind of plays it in a different way. He does actually want to get round and, and then play, you know, um, what's the word? A bit, bit more time on the board, a bit less acceleration away from it. Um, I, that's what I'm saying. If, if Liverpool want to back most other, it's got to be someone who's quick or left footed, and I, which I think is uh, what the point was getting made before. Right then, let's moving on to the main topic of the show. Then we are going to be talking about Romeo Lavia. Let me just uh, bring Fabrizio Romano's tweet up as. There we go, yeah. For Mitchell Romano, I understand Liverpool have asked the conditions of Romeo Lavia deal. They're in the race. Arsenal away. I've been working on this deal for 15 days, but there's been no official bid from both clubs yet. Man United and Chelsea are monitoring the situation, but there are no active talks yet. So, the thing with Lavia, interesting one really, because he was named as a target, and then it was like, is he, is he not? Where are, where, where are we at? Where are we not? Um it makes sense that he's going to leave Southampton, obviously, uh, they, after their relegation. I think he's he's too good to be in the championship. But he is a very young defensive midfielder. And the point was made before about Stefan Bajcetic and the Liverpool just think that Romeo Lavi is just better than him. They bring, they're going to have both of them. Maybe this is a roadmap towards, you know, uh, moving on from Fabinho at some point down the line, who, you know, if last season was, was a major worry for Fabinho um, in that, yeah, his legs look like these fell off basically. Then he, he had a poor campaign. Um, so maybe there's. I I do like Lavia. I'll be honest. I do like Lavia. I think he's a very very good player. He's very very promising. Now, City have the buyback option, but not until next summer. So maybe that's what's maybe sparking a few teams into the race as well. Perhaps like they know if it's not now, there's a very good chance Manchester City will activate that clause next summer. And even if they don't play him, because whether whether they think he is. They could buy him and then they get the choice of who they sell him to and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I do like Lavia. I think it's a, a very interesting link. That Again, it's the age. That's the, the, the thing that is like a bit of a, not not red flag, I suppose, just asks a few questions. My thinking was, Liverpool, if they're going to sign midfielders, they need, you know, they, they've got young players and they've got older players. It's like those those prime age players. You know, you go going into the prime, like your Alexis McAllister, you know, mid-20s, where they... They developed. They've had, you know, Alexis McAllister's twenty-four. So effectively, his next three years at Liverpool, where four to you know three to four years is when he goes into his peak. We've we've got an older midfield and we've got a very young midfield. I thought there would be more in that range. Now, McAllister's one of them, of course. Now, Lavia is really young, nineteen. There's the Kefren Terem stuff. To Kefren Terem, sorry, who's a, who's a little bit older, but. That you know, twenty two. That kind of makes sense. A, a nineteen year old. I don't know. I mean, I I do think he's an extremely talented player, and I can see that. I can see why he's on the list. That if he is, of course, on the list. But yeah, the I, I for me, hopefully, and I, again, I don't know where we're at with the signings and all that kind of stuff. If Lavi is one, I still think there probably needs to be another one. I'm all I'm all for buying really talented young players and letting them develop and stuff. And listen, Lavi has pro- proven to me that he's he's of a level where he can play Premier League football. But I would like if I don't know if you, again you do let me know, guys, in the in the comment section. Um, do you think that Liverpool need like more prime age players? It, it feels like a bit of a risk. Um, it feels like a bit of a risk getting another young player, and unless of course again there's going to be three of them. McAllister, brilliant deal, absolutely fantastic. Can't, no complaints. I don't think many people have got complaints. Um, young play, the rest of it, I don't know. Um, Bobby going here with his comments. I think Lavia could be a great option. It seems like he'll be very expensive, though. It could be a huge risk given his age, and you just don't know how a player will kick on. The, the, yeah, and I thought going into this summer, Liverpool might go for more sure things. Now, listen, to be fair, they've got, they have got a lot of data on Lavia. They've seen him play Premier League footy before. You know, I think he's played for Southampton. He played pretty much an entire season. Um, 
so there's enough data. I think they put, I think they always say they try and watch them for like 50 times or so. I don't know. Lavia last year for, for Southampton, I bring his stats up here in all comps. Um, he played, there we go. So he got 29 league appearances, 35 appearances in total as well. So there's a bit of, there's a, they've seen it, they've probably seen quite a bit of him. He's obviously been playing, um, it's a little bit of international stuff as well, but not too much. But yeah, if you look at his Premier League footy, he had the hamstring injury, of course, which limited him um, September, October time. But after that, he was playing regularly for Southampton. Now, listen, it was hard graft playing for Southampton. They were not very good at all. Look at all those reds and blues. He didn't win many footy games. But I don't think he was the problem, really. I think he was one of the shining lights that they had. He's a, um, he's a very, very, very talented young player. So where, where does he, where does he fit? Now, Tombra makes a, this is a... He says don't need. He says another midfielder with no goal threat is exactly what we don't need. Um, I think I would like someone whoever. The, if there's a, another midfielder coming in, if Lavia is one of them, and it looks who knows, looks like Liverpool might be in the mix, back in the mix for Lavia. I agree. I think the, I think they need one who can score as well. But your DM that listen, if he's playing defensive midfield, then doesn't really matter. If Liverpool are going to play him. It's now out number six. I don't think that's hugely important. But I, I do agree. I do agree with the general sense that those two number eights in the system, if that's what we're going to continue playing with, need to have goals. I've been saying this on numerous shows. McAllister has got a bit of it. A lot of his goals were penalties, but he looks like he has got a bit of a goal threat. Um, do who else is really in those attacking options? Henderson rarely scores. Elliot doesn't score really. Thiago doesn't really score many goals. Curtis Jones has got the potential, but hasn't really sh- shown it so far. So I do agree. Generally, I would like a, another goal scorer in midfield. That um, I do think. We, I, I do think, especially if we're going to stick with this system in the old system, the the four three three old style. It was nice to have them, but it, you know the, the, the midfield's job was to facilitate the front three and let them go mental and go and score all the goals. And listen, Liverpool won every trophy doing that, so it did work. But at this this new system, if Trent's going to continue, you know, drifting into the middle of the field, and you're going to have effectively five forward, you are right. I would like, I would like one of them to, um, I would like one of them to be able to score some goals. Uh, we've got a super chat in from Honesty. I can't even say that name. I do apologies. Hortentia? I don't know. Will Lavia and Saram count as homegrown? Because I still don't know exactly the homegrown quota thing works up the Reds. No. Um, effectively, the homegrown quota stuff is... You can only register 17 non-homegrown players, I think it is, in in the champion, in your Premier League squad. And if you don't register... If you don't register 17... Uh, you know that's 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 the maximum you can have at seventeen foreign players. So you need to pad out your squad with with homegrown players. Um, so that, I think that's kind of where it is. I think he t- I think Lavia turns home. There's ways you can convert into it and stuff as well. But I'm not quite sure. I'm, I don't think Salam definitely isn't. Uh, I'm not sure on Lavia's two at all. But that's the general gist of it. You can't have you. you it's more. It's not about having enough homegrown players. It's you can only have a limit on non homegrown players. So you do have to pad your squad out with more English. Players, um, obviously Liverpool lost Milner, they lost Chamberlain, they might lose now Phillips. They still got plenty of English players, so or homegrown players, so it's not a problem just yet. But it is something they're probably going to have to look at down the line uh, as Jordan Henderson gets a little bit older and things like that. Um, maybe you know Keith Keller account, but if, is he going to be sold? We don't know. So there's a, it is something that Liverpool, I'm sure, are keeping an eye on. We did have a super chat from D, but I, D, it, it, there's no comment attached to it, mate. So thank you for the super chat. Um, if, if you want to type something into the chat if, throughout the show, I'll, be, I'll try and find it and bring it up for you, mate. Um, let's have a little look. Um, Bobby says, uh, he's, sorry, we've got Jono. He says, if we can't get a lot of goals out of our five forwards, then we'll have bigger problems than not having a goal-scoring midfielder. No, you're, it's it's only three of them. My point, I don't know if I made it clear, Jono, is that I, I do think... Um, Obviously, three strikers are playing. Yet they they are obviously going to get more, they should get all your goals. But those two behind definitely need to be chipping in. They absolutely do. There's no doubt about it. They are so close to the goal and so close to attacking areas. That what's the point of having them if not? So they do. I I, I get your point. Liverpool do have five very good football. Well, potentially five very good forwards. I'm convinced on Jota. Well, there's no doubt for me on obviously on Mo Salah. Gapo hit the ground running. Looks really good. Darwin Nunez. I think there's still question marks, but you know you can't really argue. The numbers were good if the performances weren't always brilliant. I still think Louis Diaz is an issue in terms of he probably needs to get more goals. Now, he started having that run 
uh, before he got injured. So hopefully next season he can start getting himself back on the goals. But he is one who doesn't score. You know, he doesn't score as much as Sadio Mane on the left hand side he used to score. Salah on the right on the right hand side is still Mo Salah. He'll always score. So if Liverpool are going to play Diaz, especially on the left, I do think there is a drop off in goals now. You can make that up with your, your number nine, so Nunes or Gapo, but also we you're attacking tens, eight, whatever you want to call them. So that's where that's that's kind of the point I was making. Um, let's have a little look. D has sent a super chat in. Thanks very much. D says, um, Tram is looking really sound in the under twenty one French side. I think he has to be our next priority, and Trent has to take the number eight, not the number, but the role in midfield. I don't think Trent should ever be a number eight in midfield in terms of being the high up the pitch. I I completely disagree. I think he needs. You want for Trent. You don't want Trent with his back to goal. I don't see that. that you, you don't want people firing the ball into Trent. And that's not what I want. I want Trent with time and space on the ball, like he was doing towards the end of the season, um, to get his head up and pick all these passes. He, and he, he will naturally find himself advancing into midfield forward positions, and then he still can score. Listen, the goal he scored that for England is kind of what, what I'm thinking of an attacking area for Trent is that he can wander into those areas and then do that kind of stuff. But I don't think you want Trent Alcantara-Arnold, A, legging it everywhere to press players and then B, getting the ball on the half turn. I just don't think that's what you want. I don't think it's you're getting the most out of them. Uh, but those positions are harder than Jürgen's team. They run around loads and they press loads. I don't think that, I don't think personally that you'd want Trent doing that. Um, Taram has to be the next player. I think Taram, listen, by all accounts, he very much is high up on Liverpool's list of priorities. Um, whether Nice are willing to sell him is another matter. If, I'm guessing he, the player would like to join Liverpool if the if the um, if the chance provides. So I do I I do think um, Liverpool probably need a bit more athleticism in field, and I need to ram certainly carries that. I, I I did watch a bit of him. To be fair, I watched the under twenty one game that he was in the other day. I actually thought Manu Kone who was winking, wink, being linked with Liverpool. Sorry, sorry, was probably even better. He, he really he, he was outstanding. Both of them were very outstanding. But you are right. I do think he's a very good player. Um, let's have a little look. Hi, Steve. Do you think Diaz? This is from. Sorry, I should have said this is from John, John Summers. Hi, Steve. Do you think Diaz will have a big season for us after the return after injury? His goal against Germany was impressive. It was a good header, and um, the gritty that he did afterwards, even better. Um, I I love Luis Diaz. I think he's brilliant. I would like again a bit more in, on the numbers side of the game. I think you know that that, that left hand side, the the goal scoring. Um, I'm just going to bring some stats up for him now. Give me a second, but that that is one where I'm thinking um, Liverpool could do with him. To be honest with you, of getting a few more goals, I think he's fantastic. I love the I love the attitude of Luis Diaz. I think you know his, his will to win is just unquestionable. Like he's he's an absolute superstar player, but uh, you know whether he gets the the, the numbers, I'm just going to I'm just going to bring no stats up. That I promise you, I'm just getting onto LFC history now. He, he showed before the injury that he, he's got it in him. But here we go. So, obviously, uh, he's, he scored 11 times for Liverpool in his entire career. Now, listen, he's had a lot of injuries. I, I'm very much aware of that. So, obviously, he scored six in his first season in all comps and then uh, five last year. Now, if you compare that to his appearances, 47 games, 11 goals. Uh, I, I'd want that. I don't know if one in... One in four, almost one in five. I don't think that that is what Liverpool are after. I think he could do with it, getting those up. Now, the assist numbers, again, six assists. So, effectively, 17 goal contributions in 47 games. I get, I get of it. A lot of it was, you know, he joined the side in January, he needed time to settle in, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think there's a genuine case for me. I, I love Lewis Diaz, the player, and I'm sure he can get better at it. I'm sure he can score goals. But I think, I think if you want to be in Liverpool's forward line, I don't think one in five cuts that again cuts it really. He probably needs to up that a little bit. He definitely can. He's, you've, we've seen we've seen him score tons of really good goals for Liverpool. Um, time will tell. But that's that's my thing with with Diaz. I, I think he's a superstar mate. I think he will have a good season, um, and he hasn't been bogged down with tons and tons of playing last year because like like the rest of them looked knackered. He had a good time off. Um, now of course I. Um, he was he, he was he was rehabbing. Of course so he wouldn't have been. He wasn't sitting down doing nothing. But the injury might have got you know. Get over the injury, get some get some minutes. I actually think it was a good thing he played in the in the internationals. I'm not a big fan of international footy, but I think Diaz going has probably done Liverpool a bit of a favour. He'll go away, have his audience, and he'll kick on pre-season. I'm sure he'll be fine. Um, it goes back to the the, the story we spoke earlier about, about Jamie Doku. Um, the, the Liverpool think they need six forwards. At the moment, they've got five. 
and then a little bit of Harvey Elliott knocking about or whatever. Um, Fabio Carvalho is going out on loan. So it's whether they think they need six to rotate them all through. I don't know. Um, but I'm after Jota will score. I'm convinced Jota will score goals. Salah will score goals. The other three, I still think eh, there's questions. I think about all of the goal scoring records, although. And no one's questioning the ability of Gakpo and Diaz. I think that's for certain. Darwin, there probably is a little bit more questions. People are probably asking a bit more. But in fact, his numbers were okay. So, yeah, we're not really talking about the forward line, are we? Everything's midfield and defence. But I do wonder, like say, there might be a number six. Um, uh, a number six forward rather coming in. Let's have a, a little look then. A couple more stuff before we get doing. Um, let's have a little look. Luke Angel says Ben Doak could be six for me. He absolutely could be. Who knows? Again, my guess is Liverpool will have a... Um, a pre-season where you can't let these lads shoot the battle kind of thing and see you there is a place available isn't he for a six forward within the squad they might say to all the young players you know Kay Gordon you can throw into that mix as well one of you guys going in that slot it's, there's definitely a potential for that um, but you are right Ben Doak looks very very promising if nothing else we've had uh, one more question I'm going to try and bring it up now from Dally Pool, I think it is yeah it says Hi Steve, if we go and get a left centre back and Trent continues with the box midfield, what do you think happens with Robbo? It's a bit unfair to bench him. I think he's been one of our best players in recent years. Um, I don't think he would be on the bench. I, I think if Liverpool signed the left centre back, it is just a rotation of piece to go in the in the in the middle of the team. Now there'll be games where you do want to put him in. What I think it would be, I think they'd try and probably sell to Tim Akash if that was the case. Now I like Costa, I think he's been a a very, very good squad player for Liverpool, and he's a, a very nice guy as well. Um, had the pleasure of talking to him personally. Very, very kind, very nice man. And he was a very nice my son as well. But anyway, I think Robertson can play left side of centre back. He's done it a bit for Scotland and he looked he looked fine there, he looked good there. But I think Liverpool were worried that if Robertson wasn't available, can can cost last Tim McCast do it? I don't know. He looks more like a left winger type left back than a defensive left back so maybe that's the I don't think Robbo's going anywhere for another year if truth be told um, uh, but maybe the pillar just again excuse me maybe there's a bit of future proofing because they didn't future proof the midfield and then it really bit them in the arse and then you end up um, in a situation where you're desperate I hope the pillar are looking at centre back because there's you know Matip's going to go Gomez there's massive questions over Gomez um, Van Dijk who knows? He, he probably he maybe he, he hopefully he can reach the levels, but maybe you've got to look after him a little bit more. He he referenced himself how much football he's played recently. So I think if Liverpool sign a centre, I do think they're future proofing a bit. It's almost getting Joel Matip's replacement in now before Joel Matip leaves. So, so I think that's kind of where we're at. I wouldn't. I think. I don't think. I don't think Andy Robbo's got much to worry about. Um, it's crossbow says Darwizzy will have a class season next season. You love just making me say Darwizzy on the super chat. It's crossbow, don't you? I. I hate that nickname so much. <laughs> really, I just don't like it. And I keep having to say it on the internet. But it's fine. It's all good. The things I'll do for a 199 Super Chat. Hey, right then, yes, yeah, so I'm going to start wrapping up there, guys. Thanks so much. If you haven't already on this very YouTube channel, episode one of our Roberto, docu Roberto Firmino documentary, the best in the world. It's available right now. The feedback's been amazing. The comments have been amazing. It would be absolutely fantastic. It's completely free. If you guys want to go over and give it a watch now, it's on this very channel. Just go and search for it. As it stands, it's about 75,000 people have already watched it. And again, we've had very, very little in terms of bad feedback. In fact, none. It's all been excellent. So go and check it out if you haven't already. And we'll be back, Paul, Chris, Dan and Chloe with the Originals podcast later on this afternoon. We'll see you all for that one. See you in a bit. You could see he had ability, definitely. The most skillful number nine Liverpool have ever had. He was part of one of the greatest teams Liverpool have ever put together. A legend forever. Gives everything for the fans and everything for the club. Everyone to a person said, I love Bobby Firmino. Great example of hard work, of dedication on and off the pitch. He's one of them players, he does a lot of things for the team that goes unnoticed. He's world class. At Hoffenheim has das gesehen, was es ist: ein Ausbildungsverein, ein kleiner Verein, der für ihn den nächsten Schritt ermöglicht für die Selesau, für einen größeren Verein. I knew sooner or later he will leave the club because he was definitely for something bigger. You know, you fly across the world and all of a sudden we're signing this deal that would become incredible for the team. Mino you know, had a quiet start at Liverpool when Jurgen first came in and seeing people don't realise how good he is. The confidence was there, he knew the manager backed him, trusted him. Bobby was the key that made 
that team worked so well. Champions League, European Super Cup, Club World Cup, Premier League in the space of 13 months. He was right at the heart of, of everything. Part of the team that brought the title back. That team will never be forgotten. I'm going to be telling my kids and my grandkids about what Bobby Firmino did at Liverpool Football Club. It'd be a big miss for, for everyone. You had a chance to watch episode one of Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our brand new documentary series. If you haven't, check out episode one right now on YouTube. And if you want to watch the full series, head to redmenplus.com. Episode two, episode three, and full interviews with all of the incredible contributors, including Liverpool skipper Jordan Henderson. It will be there for you. Go over, fill your summer with Bobby Happiness, with Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our exclusive